Welcome everybody to uh, Honors Chemistry for the new year. Uh, we're going to have a little video here about our syllabus, kind of give you the background of that and get us rolling into the year. Okay, so first thing, how to find the syllabus. Uh, if you are on our uh, Schoology page uh, under Honors Chemistry, you will see that the main page here has some general course information, our current unit, uh, previous and upcoming units, that's kind of our ma main layout. And then under the general information, oh look, there's a syllabus. So we'll uh, click on that guy. And we have a couple options right now. We have the syllabus and then some essential learnings. So we'll just click on the syllabus to pull that up so you can follow along with me if you want. Uh, and then here is our syllabus for, for uh, this year. Um, and we'll take a look at that. I'm going to click on this little link here, which kicks it out to a little bit bigger view for us. Um, that way we can see it a little bit better as we go through this and then we will talk about kind of everything about honors chemistry. So first of all, um, we have a couple different instructors this year, uh, myself, uh, Kevin Dirksen, and then also Patrick Calmy are the two instructors. We run the course together, so you're gonna find that we use the same syllabus and all of our kind of policies are all the same. Um, here's ways to get a hold of me, obviously using Schoology or our website is a great way to contact me through those communication tools. But we also have a, um, a phone number you can use to text or call uh, to get a hold of us or our email addresses are here for you guys also. Um, I'm not gonna hit everything in this uh, syllabus, you are responsible for reading through everything and then asking me questions about it. Uh, I'm just going to hit the highlights, the things that are probably the most important things to talk about. So we have a series of goals here. Most of those uh, pertain to uh, you know gaining chemical knowledge and preparing for the future and hopefully getting some appreciation and enthusiasm for chemistry. Um, we do have some basic expectations of the class. Uh, following safety rules, being on time, ready to go, um, being an active learner, taking responsibility, that kind of stuff, you know, which, you know, most classes are kind of expecting you guys to do. Um, there's one thing about our course that probably is different than a lot of the courses. Uh, we are a lab-based course, and we do consume a lot of uh, chemical and materials every year. Um, one thing that we ask is that... Um, if you are capable is to give us a lab donation, okay? This is a donation. Um, we do not make this request lightly. Um, we ask that if you can give somewhere between five and $10, but really any amount that you're able to or willing to is appreciated. Um, to give you an idea of what the donation is used for, uh, we use it to replace broken glassware, to replace consumable chemicals, uh, bonus labs, uh, update our equipment, add technology, sanitation supplies like Kleenex and paper towels and wipes, that kind of stuff. Um, and it also helps us with demonstrations. Um, some of the other key things it does for us, if we this money, um, we actually uh, don't charge for any glass that gets broken in our class. So basically, we don't have to find students if they break things under normal uh, use, uh, which I think makes a much more relaxed and more focused lab environment. So that's one kind of big thing for that. And then overall, you know, the district just doesn't fund our equipment as much as we need to. So by doing this, um, it does give us what I can consider the best possible learning uh, thing for um, our students. So. That is one thing we do ask, and I'll talk more about that in class with the students uh, for everybody here. So those are our lab donations. To make the donation, uh, you just click on this link. It's the fee pay system that you use for all your sports and anything else. Uh, and then the, um, the link is gifts donations, and that's kind of takes you there to do that. So we'll take care of that all online and not need to worry about any money in the classroom. Uh, our class is going to be run heavily through the mobile devices. Uh, all students at Egan High School now have iPads. They're school iPads. So my expectation is that you do bring them to school, come to school every day with them, charged, uh, ready to go in the class. Um, make sure that we're using them for school use only. And if they are used for non-curriculum related things that are causing a nuisance or just a detriment to your learning, um, I will take care of that through referrals and other things. Um, one highlight is that on test quiz days, um, we had those things completely shut down and off of our person, which means they cannot be in your pockets, they cannot be in your backpacks, um, unless you put your backpack away from you and so forth. Uh, so make sure that we have all mobile devices, including smartwatches and everything, um, away from you during any type of assessment. In our class, we have four different ways that we grade you. Uh, there are formative assessments, which can be little in-class quizzes. There can be little informal activities that we do in class. Um, basically, this is all stuff that happens for the most part in class or some little quizzing we do. We do have a laboratory component, which is 10% of your grade also. Uh, we do a lot of video lessons in here. 
and they um, there's some homework involved with that. That's 10% of your grade. And then the majority of what we do is these summative unit exams, which is 70% of your grade. So um, that's kind of the big one there. Uh, our grading scale is pretty typical for Egan High School. One thing to note, um, I don't round 92.5s up to an A. Uh, you need to get higher than a 92.9 for that to be rounded up. So uh, kind of make sure you notice that I round things in the, in the tens place, not the whole uh, percentages in my class. Um, incompletes are something that do happen once in a while in our school. Um, we do that only for documented medical reasons for the most part. Um, so if you just have missing scores at the end of a trimester because you were just gone for some reason and nothing is documented about that, um, we don't just carry our trimester on and give you incomplete. So incompletes are really only there for people who have a documented reason that's been working with our counseling department. So be ready for that. Uh, we have summative unit exams. Um, they're posted uh, based off of all of our learning targets, and learning targets are posted for every single unit for you. Um, they're a mixture of multiple choice, problem solving, calculation, short and written response, those kind of things. On exam days, uh, one thing you need to be aware of, if you miss a test day for whatever reason, planned or not planned, um, you will most likely be asked to take an alternative exam. Uh, the alternate exam, same material, same level of difficulty, uh, but it will have a different format to it. So usually my alternate exams have either less or no multiple choice, um, and they tend to have more written response and more problem-solving questions involved with them. Um, we do that just to maintain the integrity of the test and also to make sure that we're only missing exam days uh, for necessary reasons and not just to get yourself an extra day to study. Uh, there's no extra credit. So... Um, please don't ask for it. There's, there's none. It doesn't exist in my class. Uh, late work. Um, we do accept late work at any point in time. You'll get um, at least 50% of the earned credit um, if you turned in before the unit exam. After a unit exam, um, that's going to be up to our discretion of how much credit we give you for turning in late work. So if you miss an assignment, not a big deal. Uh, get it into us as soon as you can. Um, but don't plan on getting a lot of credit for it if you turn it in six, seven weeks late or at the very end of a trimester. Uh, we do have finals. They are accumulative, so be ready for that. And the information can span multiple trimesters at times, so we'll talk more about that when it comes to finals times. In terms of absences, um, if you are gone the day um, that's excused, but it's not pre-planned, you're sick. So if that happens, um, on the day an assignment is given, um, if you need extended due date, please talk to me about that and we'll schedule an extended due date for you on that. If you are gone the day an assignment is due, okay, you have two options. Everything we turn in in my class is done electronically. So you can turn the assignment in from home on your due date, even if you're not in the classroom. That's very possible. Otherwise, um, I will assume that that assignment will be turned in um, at class or at, by class time the day you come back to school. Okay, so when you come back to school, you should be coming back to school ready to go and so forth. Okay, um, labs get tricky a little bit because labs are done with partners. So if you're gone on a lab day, your partner will still run the lab like normal, and then you and your partner are responsible for communicating with each other. You're responsible for getting the information from your partner, your partner is responsible for getting the information to you, and that way um, you know what you missed and you can then help them prepare to turn in the assignment, or if there's a quiz on the lab, you actually are gonna use that to get yourself prepared to take that quiz. Um, for tant, for example, in quizzes, uh, the expectation is the day that you return from being absent, you take the, that test or that exam, okay? Um, now, if you're gone for multiple days before the test, you know, you get mono and gone for a week or some of that, we'll communicate and we'll figure out a better scheduled time. Um, but the normal expectation is the day you return, that's when you take the test. Um, if that's not going to work, please just schedule that with me ahead of time so I have that planned and so forth. Okay. If you do know you're going to be gone, okay, you have you know extended weekend, um, something that you have pre-planned. Please talk to me in advance so we can get everything scheduled ahead of time. Uh, it's less stress for you and less stress for me. Um, if you have an unknown or unexcused absence in my class, okay, uh, that means that there's you were gone for some reason and the attendance office was never notified for the reason why, okay. Uh, that could be that your mom and dad just forgot to call in that you were sick, or it could mean that you skipped my class for some reason. Uh, I really don't care why it is, but if it's unknown or unexcused, uh, if there was any type of assessment that day, you will get a zero for that until uh, that absence is. Um, basically resolved or taken care of or verified. So um, if you end up with an unexcused absence, 
that the parents are made aware of that and communicated with me so we know that you that you did something that was unexcused for being missed, then at that point we can give you a grade for that assignment. But until that's been communicated, uh, there's no points for that. So um, also with this, if you do have unexcused or unknown absences in my class, um, there is no time extension. So the policy of getting extra time to make up work does not apply when you don't have a verified absence in the school. So expect uh, if you're gone for an unexcused reason or unknown reason that um, you should have all your work turned in on time or it will be considered late. Okay, um, we have a yearly outline. So we cover these different units throughout the year. You can read through those. Uh, and sometimes, depending on our time, we get some time to do a couple extra units or, or down here. Okay, um, that was really fast in terms of how the syllabus works. Uh, and that's kind of the intent of this. If you have questions about the syllabus, that's how we will start our day tomorrow is taking questions on that and reviewing this idea of those basic kind of rules and procedures through our class this year. Uh, thank you guys. I'm looking forward to a great year and I'll see you tomorrow.